We are back to exploring Cuba Libre. Uh, this is going to be the last exploration of this particular plane of Cuba Libre because tomorrow I'm going to be playing this with other people, or at least that's my hope. It's, it's hard to say what's going to happen with other people, which is part of what makes Cuba Libre such a delicious game because it does involve more than one person. And the more humans you have interacting in a, in a space where they actually can interact, and be humans, the less predictable it becomes. But I intend to push for this game, um, and I think I think we might play it. We'll see. That was that was the proposal, anyway, is that we play this. But there's you know maybe people showing up who I don't know, um, and you know it is a four-player game. So if if the numbers don't work out to four then it might not be played. But enough about that, let's get back to this because we are limited in time and we'll see if we, we can't get it done tonight. I highly doubt it though, my time is limited. Um, so we're at the Pact of Caracas right now. Um, the July 26th player, they did a special op with activity, did an ambush here, that was all they did, um, trying to kind of conserve their money and that was the only place they wanted to fight, but they wanted to fight back here and kind of keep the government occupied in that area. Uh, and that left the, um, they're not the AUC, the direct, El Directorio. I kind of have to change. I, I've played Andy Nabis a, a few times, several times, and so I kind of have AUC ingrained in my head. I gotta uh, uh, loosen up my language uh, connections. Anyway, so that left them to be able to make the pack, which is good for them because they're gonna they're gonna remain um, eligible for the next card, which they get first first dibs on. Uh, Rodriguez Loishes. All right, so that's what went down. They're going to have a, a pact now. The government's going to have a chance to do limited ops. And they have a special limited op thing. They get a special activity if they do it, so they're probably going to play on that. We'll see what the next card is, though. So Pact of Caracas is going to go here into our insurgent capabilities. We also have the Mafia here. I didn't. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, the, um, the Syndicate can can do assassinations for the rest of the game. Okay, Rodriguez, Loetius, it's going to be up to uh, El Directorio to make the decision what they're going to do. So Rodriguez, Loetius saw um, the El Directorio fighting back some more. They got to put a guy down here and then get a free ambush, got rid of some of the cubes. So the government's kind of getting beat back in this area. We're seeing some, some real conflict happening here. Uh, but they're not out of there yet, and the government really hasn't had a chance to strike back. Cartel, the government passed, actually, hoping to, you know, so they can get first dibs on this next card, Sanchez Mosquera. And then um, the syndicate got their first big kind of casino opening. A wave of casinos opened up across Cuba. Um, here, here, here. And then they also muscled some government troops out. This is, this is a great... Uh, ability that the syndicate has that I don't know if I commented on or not, but they have this muscle special ability where they can just move two two of the other players' cubes to help protect them, which I think is really fun that they're able to do that. Um, so there we go. Okay, the government has begun their counter strike. They swept. They all but left Santiago de Cuba. They just kind of left it to 26 July, preferring instead to to attack their their home base of. Uh, Sierra Maestra, um, which, I don't know, we'll see how that works out. The, the, the uh, insurgents certainly do have a couple of bases there. And, I don't know, they, they, they got a good opportunity because of this um, thing that let them sweep with police to move their police out of a city. It's nice to be able to get a police out of the city because then you can, um, you can operate in that area and you can um, change the, the level of support with the help of police police fellows. So they did that there and they did that here. They kind of struck back at both the insurgent branches, um, did, did a, a reprisal here, which is an, another different thing about this game than Andy and Abyss. The government can actually uh, commit terrorism, terrorist acts um, that the game recognizes as terrorist acts against the, the populace um, in order to get things to change. So they, they beat up some folks out in the woods and that caused the folks to not be so anti-government because they got got scared. Um, so that's what's going on now. The uh, the July 26th they passed so that they have first dibs on Raul here. Um, we'll see if they choose to pick the the um, insurgent capability or not. It lets them re-roll a die when they're attacking or kidnapping, which which might be useful. We'll see. 
And the Raoul cards saw no invoking of Raoul's ability to improve the July 26 capabilities. Instead, it saw the kind of um, hit back uh, of the red and the yellow, the July 26 and the El Directorio against the government. So uh, the July 26, they rallied, kind of undid most of what the government did, though the government still has its police there. And then the El Directorio, they sabotaged this EC, so they, they just kind of tweaked the government's nose a little bit. So it's the syndicate players' turn to, to act, and they have the fat butcher. It's a, it's a, the game's kind of divided into the two, two halves now in terms of who's acting when. It goes back and forth on that. Um, next time, I don't know if they keep this flow, unless someone passes, it's going to keep doing that. We'll see. Um, so they, they have a choice to make uh, as to what to do. Let's look at their kind of board position right now. They've got a lot of their casinos out, so they're doing fine on that, but they did that at the cost of some money. So they need some propaganda to happen so they can get some money off of those casinos. But in the meantime, they're trying to make a, a, a buck. Um, so what they're doing is they have this fat butcher here, and they're saying to the government player, hey, I could reduce your aid to zero. Or you could give me a little bit of money right now, and I'll do something that's mutually beneficial to us both. The government player is like, okay, so what do you want? And the syndicate player says they want money. They, they haggle for a time, and I think they come up with $3 as the amount. And I really don't know what's a good amount. I'm bad at open-ended negotiations like this. But that's what, I, I just enjoy the act of negotiating, I guess, in a, in a game context. I usually will go with whatever the person comes up with most of the time. We'll see. Um, but that's something you kind of have to get with experience. And I don't have enough experience to know if that's a good price, but that's what they did. So the syndicate player, not totally trusting the government not to, to use an event to hurt them because they could close a casino, I guess. Um, they decide to use the event, especially since events are free, um, to go here. And it says they get a free ambush with one of their underground gorillas. So they're gonna use this one, ambush a couple of these guys here, get rid of them, which gets them off their back, and protects, protects that casino. So we have good, or, good news and bad news for the government player. They were able to, to knock off the El Directorio quite a bit. El Directorio is no longer here, no longer here, lost a guy there due to airstrikes. Problem is it's cost them some money. They're running low on funds and they're gonna be short some money off from this um, EC next propaganda and their aid is still low. So they're you know they're they're fighting back. They I mean El Directorio, I haven't even updated this yellow thing, but they have like hardly anything on the board now. It looks like maybe three three points they have. Yeah, it looks like three no 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 five points. So they, they, their marker should be there. Escopateros saw the um, kind of regrowth of the yellow and blue forces. That's about all that happened. Yellow kind of poked up more. El Directorio probably had some speeches, got some people going all across the island. Um, and then July 26th, they just moved a few people. That's all. Now, now we have um, the syndicate has some choices to make. They're green, and they want money. This would give them ten dollars, ten resource points, which is good for them. Um, Anastasia would help with that. However, this next card is also helpful to them. Um, the flip side, the thing they have to think about is if they don't choose this event, if they pass, then the government might might do a little bit of um, coercion, a la the syndicate a la what they did earlier, and say, hey, you know, you can pay us a little bit of money now that we're short on funds, um, or else we're going to use this terrible event on you, which closes, you know, two of your casinos and takes away five of your dollars. And that minus five would give them a, you know, a good bargaining place to start, give us five dollars, right? So I think the syndicate kind of has no choice other than to do the event here, rather than pass, they might have wanted to wait for this card. Um, so they're going to get 10, putting them at 19. And the government, they can do a full op, or they could just wait and do a full op next time and deprive someone else of it. And I think that's what they're going to do. So they're going to pass, get three, one, two, three. And then I'm going to go to the next card. And we've kind of changed, we've, we've broken our little cycle now. 
That was why as propaganda came up. So the government is going to be able to have first shot on that. And then someone else is going to probably get a limited op, and then it's going to be scoring time. All right, we've finished the propaganda, save for reset and redeploy and all of that. Um, and because I have to go, I'm going to be able to come back, though, I think, and do some more. I don't think we're going to finish the game unless someone wins, but that could happen. So let's take a look at what, what's going on. Um, the government did some training prior to the final card. Uh, no special activity, so that limited the people, uh, made it so that they couldn't use events. So, you know, the... Uh, El Directorio just did a, a piddly limited operation, didn't really make the most of it. Um, Propaganda-wise, uh, it's interesting that the compared to Annie and Abyss, the, the difference in the way that money flows. So um, it's, it's, it's a lot smaller scale, I think, in terms of money. And the government, man, if, if not for the syndicate, they, they had as much money as July 26 here. And that was after the propaganda. But then, you know, they were able to skim enough off of the syndicate that they were able to bring back up. And it was a good thing they did, too, because the syndicate was actually over their mark here. And um, so it was very close to their victory conditions because they would have been past that and almost past it for the open casinos, which means people are going to probably have to start thinking about the syndicate. I think the syndicate, um, if it's anything like Andy and Abyss, or at least for me, the uh, the drug lords and that and syndicate and this, it's easy to overlook them. They kind of have a smaller troop presence on the, the map and they seem like, hey, we're just making money. What do you got to worry about us for? Uh, well, they can win. That's that's what you got to worry about them for. They're kind of playing a different game. Everyone's kind of playing a different game, but um, theirs is, is, is it, they, it's on a different axis, axis with than, than the other folks. Um, I suppose you could look at everyone like that. These are going to go away and got to move some troops around. Um, government didn't have any anywhere where they could really improve support. They could have done it here, decided not to because, one, they got a base. They can do it later there, and then they don't have to pay for the terror. Money's still pretty steep for them. Money's tight. Uh, money is just different. And the yellow player, they, they make more money in this than Indian Abyss, but I think everyone else maybe makes a little bit less than they would. So I just had to leave briefly for about an hour uh, because my son said I was supposed to take him to the store to get things for uh, tomorrow, uh, where we're uh, during which tomorrow we're having some people over to play Cuba Libre. Um, it was a lovely trip. There's a harvest moon, so there's a big orange moon hanging over our head as we bicycled there. Uh, and funnily enough, when we were at the grocery store, I ran into the people we were going to play with, and it turns out they're going to bring some themed Cuba Libre uh, things. I guess there's a drink called Cuba Libre. Um, so we're going to drink that, and also, I don't know, maybe eat some Cuban-type cuisine if they, if they really want to get on it. I'm not going to be doing that, but um, I'll eat it. Um, and then in the, the checkout, the bag boy was very eager to ask me what I was going to do this weekend and I told him I was going to play this game and he thought it was interesting and he's right. It's an interesting game so let's get back to it. Alright and here's the turn up. Here you can, the turn up of the next two cards after the propaganda phase. Here you can see the polarizing effect of cards. Why it, it seems to um, prompt a sort of rhythm where the two kind of natural allies end up going back and forth. Yellow and red and green and blue. So here you see red and yellow are right next to each other likely they're going to take this. Um, you know, one of them could do the op with special activity, the other one could do the event. And that's going to give them both kind of a, a powerful option. And then that's going to put, you know, green and blue on top. Um, this, this card here is very good for the government. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the syndicate does, whether it lets them do this, um, this uh, particular yeah, that particular event. I think they probably will because it helps them enough um, that, yeah, yeah. I think I kind of can see how it's going to go. It's going to go uh, the July 26th. I always, have, I always delay in saying July 26th because I, I want to say FARC right away. Um, I've talked about that many times. But it's going to be July 26th does the op with special activity. Um, probably the di directorio is going to use the the event here, the free march, and then free rally. Maybe not though. That's not always the best for them. I mean, rallying isn't going to help them too much. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. Hmm. 
going back to the cards, this is the kind of card that almost forces the government's hand in a situation like this, and that, that's one of the things that makes the game interesting. They have these kind of um, functions that they just kind of say, seem like they, they do this and then do that, but they kind of spur uh, hard choices. So here, if this card had been one that the government could have acted on, right, and that's not the case now unless both of these fellows pass, which they could do is kind of a gamble on their part to do that um, for the yellow and the red to pass, then the government is going to have to really decide whether or not they want to do something because the bad stuff on this, losing six aid, is pretty bad for them. Maybe not so much in this point of the game with two propaganda cards already gone, but you know if this card comes up earlier in the game, losing six aid is going to, you know, that's going to be... A, a lot of money they're going to lose overall, overall like 24 bucks if the game plays out all the way, which if people are playing well, it's probably going to happen. Uh, I'm not playing that well, so that's probably not going to happen, and I'm going to have to quit tonight. But if they lose 6A, then they're getting nothing off aid, so everything they get is going to be off of, um, you know, skimming mostly. Yeah. All right, so the uh, July 26th went guns a-blazing and pretty much just did a straight-up attack followed by a kidnapping of um, some wealthy fellow, some wealthy Cuban daughter, in order to get some money from the government, tying them up in resources. Um, and then following that, the uh, directorial did do the 12. Um, they marched up here, did a rally, a free rally, free march, free rally. Uh, and it strikes me, you know, seeing that these two bases side by side kind of draws me back to Andy and Abyss and how many times you saw bases from different factions sharing a spot in the woods or whatever. How different these two games are, really. Uh, I kind of need to, it's been so long since I've played Andy and Abyss, I, I, I play too many games that I don't really get to appreciate. And I forget things too often that I, I can't really I can't really hold things in my mind enough to appreciate the differences but um, I'm really yeah the, the, the system with just kind of some subtle changes really comes up with a very different game um, if you're worried about getting one because you have the other it's not the same at all it's a it's a very different game going on here but there's enough shared elements so that it's easy to, to, to pick up after learning the first um, but I'm, I'm going to enjoy exploring this series with a group, I think. One thought that, that occurred to me that kind of was troubling is the whole notion of rallying. I, I, I believe that there's a finite number of people who would rally to these different causes. Uh, that's not modeled in the game at all, which I'm sure there's lots of things that aren't modeled because it is a game, and it's a very user-friendly game if you get over some, some weirdnesses, I think. Um, but it, in terms of simulation, that, that would be kind of the main thing that jumps out at me that would bother me, uh, that they can just keep rallying people, die, but you can, <laughs> there's almost a limitless quantity of people that, that, will, that you can convince to join your cause. Uh, maybe that's how it is, I don't know. But it seems like there, there would be enough people that are just kind of not willing to, to join one cause or the other. Um, the, 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 the faceless population is a little too mutable, perhaps, but I don't, I don't know. I think some, some sort of, uh, some, some verisimilitude has to, has to be sacrificed in the name of playability. It's time for Herbert Matthews, and this is the sort of thing that, uh, it seems like there's like a very kind of obvious way that this should play out. Um, Kind of in the way that, that economics might dictate human behavior, Herbert Matthews does that as well. So here we have the, um, and it's just in such simple things as, as turn order and uh, effect, right? So the, the syndicate, they want money, right? And they want to be able to pursue their goals. They're, they're looking at the government being the second player, right? And that's all on the card. Now, it could be situations are different. Maybe the government's over here, but we've already talked about how it, it tends to pull, get, clump in polls, the two sides, right, in terms of who's eligible and who's ineligible. So what should they do? Well, it seems pretty obvious they should do op with special activity, and then the government's likely going to choose the event, which benefits the syndicate. 
even as it benefits maybe the government a little bit more so. But it gives the, the syndicate five more resources. That's going to put them over the top here. That's great. And at the same time, they can do some sort of um, op with special activity that's going to maybe get them some casinos or, I don't know, I, I'm still kind of learning their side. There was something I noticed that I, I thought that, oh, yeah, they want to get a majority in places so that they don't have to worry about skimming so much. Um, there's a lot to explore. But then that obviousness gets thrown off by the secondary card. Armored cars. Now the government, they get first shot at this, but if they don't take it, you know, like if they, they move on this card, they're going to be ineligible for this one. If they don't take it, it's going to be up to 26 July. And if we look at what they get to do, so they could, if they use this as an event, they get to free march and then free ambush there, which means they, they could take two pieces from someone else. Uh, so they could be here and they could move here and take two pieces or whatever. So that's not the worst thing in the world for the government. But what what are they missing out on? Until this this momentum seems like it's good to me if I'm if I'm reading it correctly. Before assault, they can move and then assault, and that's that's one of the the problems with the government. And for anyone to attack, they have to move there first. You know, that's one action, and then they attack as their second second action. So here, they could move their troops and then attack. And that seems like a, a really powerful ability for the government to have and very attractive. So they have their, you know, the government's in a, in a position now to choose between this aid and the, the syndicate's already chosen what they're going to do. So the government gets to choose now whether to pass or to, or to go ahead and do the event and get the aid back up in order to get the resources. Um, so either they get that aid and then also help the syndicate, and I think that's what's going to kind of turn the tide for their decision making, or wait and get this this powerful ability, or wait and be able to fight back because they're losing out in this this um, southeast region here. Yeah. So anyway, I think the fact that this would help the syndicate so much, and the syndicate is probably the closest to winning now. If you look at the track, means that the government is going to pass now get the money, one, two, three, from passing, and then play on the next card and take the, probably take the event then because that government momentum is so useful. I'm just gonna put things like this, put these like this, government did the event, and that's gonna give, that's gonna give these fellows an op with special activity unless they do come, comrades! I'll have to take some time to read that. And right, come, comrades uh, brought just a, an elimination of all the government forces in the southeast. The government, and this is tricky when in any CDG, I think, um, but also in, in Indian Abyss and Cuba Libre and probably a distant plane, the coin series, uh, you ha oftentimes the, the event looks, looks shiny and interesting, so you want to choose it, but sometimes it's better to choose the, the bread and butter, the operations. Um, by not choosing that, the government player, you know, got this special power, right? But they didn't they didn't hold on to their, their foothold down here. And so they're they're out there. The uh, syndicate for their part, they passed, got a got a buck, because they're gonna be number one on the next card. And the next card is seems like it's gonna be very useful for them. They're gonna make it so no one can skim off of them, which is going to do a, well, it's gonna be problematic sociologically or like in terms of their the relations with other people people aren't going to want to protect them as much because they can't they can't get that skimming hmm i wonder we'll see we'll see what comes up but so the idea is this card santo traficante jr keeps people from skimming off of you right so that's going to help the the syndicate get a lot more money at propaganda cards. At the same time, it's going to make it less attractive for people to protect you because they're not getting anything off of it. Whereas right now, the government's like, sure, we'll protect you. We could use that money. That's our main source of income because our aid from the U.S. is faltering and whatever it is else it is they get money off of. I can't remember what it is. I guess I could look it up while I'm talking to you. But... Oh, yeah, they're ECs. Their ECs are, are pretty decent. All right, yeah. All right, but they can... They're, they're, they're vulnerable as well. So, yeah, interesting. We'll, talk, we'll think about that. 
So I chose the event uh, just for the interest of time. Unfortunately, I'm out of time. However, this game is not going to reach any sort of conclusion. Uh, you can just take a look at the board state right now. It's looking like we kind of have some sort of equilibrium between the uh, the insurgents and the the government, where the insurgents are they're kind of fighting along. This is kind of the line here. Um, it looked like the El Directorio was going to have a move where they could decide. They they had an op with special activity, so they probably could have you know pushed back the government a little bit more. But this was kind of the line where they were struggling, and the syndicate was probably going to. Uh, I don't know. They were doing pretty well. They were. They ended up getting that, that no skimming thing that was going to give them the money. So if they just focused on opening casinos and hoping no one messed with them, they would have maybe walked to the end. However they are, you know, they could be pretty vulnerable. The government, if they kind of stopped worrying about this and dealing with the syndicate, maybe could have um, done a bit more. And they might have, might have done a bit more once Santa was in play. Because once Santa was in play, the government has no reason not to just close down these casinos right here. And it wouldn't take much for them to do it either. So I don't know how it was going to go. I would have loved to continue to play this game. It's, it's very engrossing. But it's going to be even, it's going to be engrossing to, to play with other people. And I hope I can bring you along for that particular ride.